Hi, my name is Trevor Sullivan, a Microsoft MVP for Windows PowerShell and an independent cloud and automation consultant. I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about PowerShell splatting. When we have PowerShell commands that have many parameters, let's take a look at the start process command, for example. We have to uh, build a very lengthy command line. So that might look like a uh, file path is C windows notepad.exe, argument list is C slash path to my file dot text. And maybe I pass in a credential to launch the process as and a working directory. Uh, C users Trevor Sullivan. And as you can see, this command is getting very long and kind of unmanageable when we're uh, reviewing and editing our code. Additionally, we don't really have any capacity to audit the parameters to this command prior to invoking it. So what I'm going to show you is PowerShell splatting. And what this essentially allows us to do is take all of these parameters here after the command and put those into what's called a PowerShell hash table. And a hash table is just a set of key value pairs or a dictionary. So uh, the way that we declare a hash table is using the at sign followed by an open and close curly brace. Now once we create that hash table, we can assign the hash table to a variable called, let's call it um, process params. And what we're going to do is create a bunch of key value pairs that map to the parameter names like file path, that's a key, and the value for that key is going to be the C Windows Notepad.exe. Now we can split the hash table across multiple lines to make it more readable as we're going through our code. So what I'm going to do is just take all the rest of these parameters here and create this key value pair from it in this hash table. I'm just going to type this out because I can type faster. And then once I've declared this set of uh, key value pairs, I can simply splat these parameters onto the PowerShell command like so. So if we run F, if we hit F5 to invoke this code, you'll see that it prompts me for a username and password. Uh, that's going to get assigned to the credential parameter, and then the process is going to run. Uh, so I'm just going to cancel out of that because I don't actually want to execute it. But uh, what I will do here is show you that because we've declared our parameters separately from invoking the command itself, we have the opportunity to audit the parameters prior to invoking the command. So we could use a command such as write host or any other command that emits output to uh, say the information stream or the error stream or the debug stream or the verbose stream. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the write host command just to echo it out to the console. And I'm going to create a string that says the process X will be launched with parameters Y in the working directory Z. And then I'm going to use uh, what's called .NET string formatting to basically substitute the values So basically I'm going to I'm going to substitute these values in so the uh, leftmost item here is going to get substituted for the 0 with the curly braces and so on for 1 and 2 so this is item 1 and this is item 2 um, and so basically we can just auto, auto, autom automate the um, auditing of these parameters prior to running the command. So the command's not actually going to work because I typed in the incorrect credential. But what you can see here is that we actually got some text echoed to the console, which is that the process, see Windows Notepad to DXE, will be launched with the parameters blah, blah, blah in the working directory blah. So Again, this just this splatting technique allows us to separate the definition of our command parameters from the actual invocation of the command itself. So I hope that helps you uh, understand PowerShell splatting. Again, my name is Trevor Sullivan. You can follow me on Twitter at PCGeek86 and visit my website at trevorsullivan.net. Thanks for watching.